Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Ken and Profit here. You might have seen a previous video I did on making this draw a fire tool. I wanted to share a few quick updates I made to the tool, as well as just to kind of go over how you can use this in your projects and to create non smoke sim fire. So, this is uh, just using a material map to a mesh. I have tutorials on how to create all of this. So if you don't want to download the tool, uh, you don't have to, you can go watch those videos. I'll link them and you can make this uh, totally from scratch. Some cool updates I made to the tool. If you uh, just draw your fire here and uh, let's say you're doing some large scale fire and your, your scene starts to slow down a little bit. Well, I added this fire low poly option. You can click that. And you can see it still plays. You don't get any of the displacement that comes with the, the higher resolution fire. Um, and if we go back to solid mode, it's just cubes. So the material is just being mapped to these cubes instead of that mesh that has a little bit more noise and distortion. So you can see this is looking very video gamey, but if you're doing really large scale fire from a distance and you need to draw a whole bunch of fire, uh, maybe crank the scale up. You can see uh, this is just rendering in my viewport. It's rendering way quicker uh, just by doing that. So there's that nice fire low poly option now in the tool. Notable features, you can of course switch to just fire if you don't want any smoke, or you can switch to just smoke if you want, you know, just smoke. <laughs> uh, you can now just turn it on and off so that you can just animate that if you need to. I've also added a trim curve segment so that you can animate the fire growing along a curve. Uh, and, and this works for the curve density as well as the manual density. There's also an updated proxy button. This updated proxy uh, now creates a bounding box. So you get a little bit of the noise from the actual fire tool. And you can also set the material here. So if you want to give your proxy a material that maps to it, similar to the fire low poly, just a little more uh, specific with what you can do with the proxy there. You can also adjust the displacement scale now if you want to get real crinkly little extra detail noise on the outside of your mesh that can help if you're doing close up, it can sort of help. Remember, this isn't a simulation, so it's not going to be uh, a perfect fire by any means, but there's uh, several tricks you can do to make it look really good, even close up. And so adjusting the displacement detail of that by using this slider right there might be able to help. And of course, you can smooth it out, get it a little bit warblier. And that just adjusts your overall look of your fires. So how do you use the draw fire tool? Well, you can uh, simply just open it. If you just open the draw fire tool, this will be the scene that greets you. It is optimized for EV. You can use it in cycles. Uh, you'll notice with cycles though, there's not enough transparency passes enabled just by default. So let me change my background color here so we can kind of see. Uh, so that's no problem just in your render settings underneath light pads. Take the uh, transparent values of this up a good bit or the total bounces, you can adjust that as well. And then you'll start to see the uh, the material come through and it should play. It's obviously noisy in real time. That's why it uh, works a little bit better in EV, but this will render in cycles. Uh, you'll be able to get that fire material provided you crank up those uh, transparency passes. Now say you don't want to just open up the tool, you want to add it to your current project file, that's no problem. I recommend you click just your top scene collection and then append in the scene collection from the draw fire tool. So I would just go file, append, and select the draw fire tool, and then it'll have you dive into the folder structure. You could append uh, a lot of different things, but it's easiest just to grab the whole scene. And then you see the scene file right there and just append that in. And so now uh, everything is in there in the background, all the materials and the geo nodes network setup. So now if you just, um, let me just clear everything else in this scene. If you just add a curve, let's say a Bezier curve and come over here to the mo modifiers panel, add modifier, geometry nodes, you'll see the fire tool in the dropdown of the geo nodes. So just select that. And now with this curve selected, you can uh, make edits to the curve if you wanna, uh, you know, do like the tool says, draw, you can draw fire. And we can go to rendered mode and see it's all working. We can um, crank up the curve density or we can switch to manual density right there. And now it works inside whatever Blender file you may be currently working in. 
So there you go, that's a quick overview on how you can use this tool. Like I said, I have tutorials on creating the material um, and mapping it to a mesh, as well as a tutorial on how to create this tool using geometry nodes. So check both those videos out. If you wanna download this file, uh, all my Patreon members get this for free as well as all my other Blender files. So head over there. You can also grab it from my website or from Blender Market. So a lot of different ways to grab this tool if you don't want to do any of the work. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.